So I think you all have to hit yes to keep going, but it's recording now. All right. So I am Matt Rudder and right here to my left. I don't know what it looks like on your side. This is Kara Rudder. She's my wife. We both retired from the army in 2020. Um, she did 23 years and I did 22 years and we retired as sergeant majors, sergeants major, however you say it, plural. And um, we decided that we just didn't want to be in the office area anymore, staring at PowerPoints and all of that, all of that stuff. And so what we did was we decided to farm and I decided to use my GI Bill to work on a master's degree and it was in I, agricultural I education. Yeah. And so, so I, do that also. Hmm. Um, so, I uh, so I got my degree in agricultural education. And as I was doing that, I started working on a whole bunch of different projects because that's what you have to do to get a degree. And I didn't want them to go to, just to paper and some gigabyte on some hard drive somewhere. We wanted them to be something that we could use in the future. Yeah, let me see. Let me see if I can mute everybody. I tried to, let me try again. All right, I think so. Can ever, somebody give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. And so we started, as I was working through this, we started working on a different, a couple of different projects. And um, the one that really took off that we liked the most was this, this first project called Farmer Boot Camp, which is sort of a precursor to what we're doing now. And as I developed that and worked through the curriculum, I started looking around at the, the internship opportunities that the D Department of Defense allows their service members to do when they get out of the military. And we decided to work on a separate program, which is this internship. And so I, I guess it, it was just accumulation of a whole bunch of different things throughout, throughout my education to get us to where we are now, which is sitting here in front of a whole bunch of farms trying to uh, find a location where we can host interns, which are active duty military members from any branch in the military that are within the last, probably like close to six months of getting out of the military. And so what we'll do is, did I miss anything? Before I do we won't cover. Okay, so what we'll do, so I can tell you what our farm is like. So first, we are very much like a lot of you guys. We have some of everything we have turkeys and chickens and ducks and alpacas and goats and pigs and about five different ways to grow vegetables from aquaponics, pool culture, normal gardening, maybe it's just three, maybe I was exaggerating. Um, oh, we're gonna do a food for so four. And, and then on the other side to run all of this, we set up a nonprofit, which is the one that y'all are interacting with right now, which is Project Victory Gardens. And Project Victory Gardens is a 501c3 we have a board and all of that, and it has a, um, a land share agreement and a, a resource share agreement with our farm so that we can kind of pull all this stuff off with what we have. Um, when we stood up the nonprofit, we decided to use it to build an internship so that we would have a way to, um, <clears throat> some something to help us, help guide us forward, which is the board and, and just sort of the rules of running a 501c3. And then uh, one more thing that we'll mention is the Farmer Veteran Coalition, which is a national nonprofit for um, veterans engaged in agriculture. Uh, so Matt stood up the South Carolina chapter. He's the, the South Carolina chapter president. Um, so if you see anything on Facebook, Farmer Veteran related uh, in South Carolina, it, it probably has our fingerprints closely associated with it. Um, so either Farmer Veteran Coalition, or, or Project Victory Gardens. And um, if the two Facebook pages seem similar, that's because we run them both. So <laughs> um, if, if that answers anyone's questions that they might have. Okay, so let what we wanna do really is explain this internship and see if it's a good fit for any of the farmers out here and hopefully place the uh, uh, an intern in the, in the sometime in the near future on your farm to help you and you help the veterans. Um, we're going to share this. Hopefully it goes. Okay. There we go. 
Can somebody give me a thumbs up if you can see it? Actually, I can't see everybody. Uh, Tamilia Farms, yeah, you gave me a thumbs up. Great. <clears throat> okay, so how do you skip forward? I got it. All right, so we, we mentioned the, the Department of Defense internship. It's actually called DOD, DOD SkillBridge. And this program is really a free internship for the host and a paid internship for the veteran, which is kind of a unique thing because a free intern or a, a unpaid internship is illegal. But because they're being paid by the Department of Defense, you don't have to pay them and they still get paid. Um, it allows them to work with industry partners. And that really is a, a wide, wide area. It's anything... A lot of folks go to Amazon or Google or big Fortune 500 companies. They go work at law firms or banks or something like that. That's sort of what it was designed for. And as we were cruising around the agribusiness space, working with different partners here in South Carolina and different veteran associations, we realized that there was nothing agricultural. There was no agricultural internships in the skill bridge. Really, uh, across the United States, there's only a handful. And... Um, I think we're probably one of the one of the most popular ones in town, at least according to the number of emails we get every day. Uh, the one thing it does is it, it, it sort of allows the veteran to get out of the military, not out of the military, they're still in the military, but get out of the daily grind of the military and into some sort of civilian job and experience that the last couple of months while they're still getting paid for the by the military to see if that is a, a good fit for them somewhere uh, for their next job. It's um, it was it was designed. It was it was in the the reason it was designed. I guess is probably the best way to say say it. The reason it was designed is because when people get out of the military and they start drawing unemployment, that branch is paying for that unemployment, and they thought it would be better just to front load um, some job training before they're officially out and try to reduce the amount of unemployment. So it was really a a, a kind of a quid pro quo. The service member gets a big benefit out of it. The Army, because that's what I'm, if I use Army instead of military, that's just my my branch of reference, so don't worry, it's every branch. The Army doesn't have to pay as much unemployment, so it's kind of a win-win. Um, did I miss anything on this one? I normally let Kara chime in because I just like to talk and miss stuff occasionally. Okay, so... We we launched this thing about... We gotta beginning be, of November. Yeah, the beginning of November. And our goal was to place 10 people, 10 to 15 service members on farms across South Carolina in a year. I didn't think it would be anything more than that. And we just checked and we are like one person short of 20 that are interested in like less than two months. So we're sort of on track to, I, I think we're probably going to place between 75 and 100. And that said, that means that the number of farms that we need to put them on kind of grew exponentially within the first two months. And so we started reaching out to find partner farms that are interested in hosting interns. Um, and if you think about the turnover, there's about 200,000 people exiting the military every year. And we recruit heavily from the South. So a lot of them come back to the South. And if you look in South Carolina, really our biggest industry is agribusiness. And um, the veteran population in agribusiness is higher than anything else, like per, per capita across any other state. I What do we have? 19%, right? Yep. 19% of, of farms in South Carolina have a veteran principal producer, which is is the highest um, of any state in the nation, uh, which, I mean, is, is pretty well recognized by Commissioner Weathers. Um, he, he's very quick to tout the veteran numbers. So um, we've, we've received great support from the SCDA. Um, and then if you look at the spreadsheet on the bottom, it just shows you sort of the range of who is the most, like the most prevalent people asking us for internships. Yeah. And it, it should be no surprise that it's the Air Force with the Charleston Air Base. Well, it's a little surprising because Fort Jackson is there too. But Fort Jackson is also a basic training base. So most people are just passing through for a few months mm -hmm. at a time. So I'm surprised it's not the Army because I'm an Army guy, but I'm happy that it's uh, that, that we're getting the support we're getting in yeah. the. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the, the interesting thing is one would assume um, oh, if a veteran wants to be a farmer, it's going to be the infantry guy, the guy who spent, you know, all of his time outside. And it's not that um, what we've seen just kind of in these first couple of months is 
it's almost 50 50 male to female um you know heavy on the air force a lot of military intelligence and support um, offices and um you know the, the hr type folks who've spent their whole time in the military in an office and they just want to get out and see the sun um and so that's what that's what we've really seen so it's it's interesting kind of tracking some of these demographics and um I, you know as matt said we're one of you know as we start out we're we're one of the biggest programs um in the DOD skill bridge, just solely related to agriculture. Okay. All right, let's see. So those are, that's, that's what you can expect coming towards your farm. And so what are the host requirements? So we've hit on a couple of them so, so far, but really you have to be on your farm full time to host an intern. It's not a, go build a fence and you go off to your day job and leave leave the veteran there working to build a fence. It needs, they, they're there as a training opportunity. And so the, the veterans that are there are trying to learn from you and to learn from you, you have to be there. And so if, if you're one of those evening farmers because you have a day job, I mean, more power to you. We have a guy that's one of my best friends in Aiken and he has a day job and I'd love to put somebody on his farm because his farm is awesome, but he doesn't work there full time. And I mean, that's really kind of the crux of it is that you are willing to spend time and train somebody to do um, any 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 of the spectrum of agribusiness, whether it's a small farm or a big farm or forestry, um, the Farm Bureau is signed up. So if you have a friend that's getting out of the military and they wanna have a business a office job, I can put them in a Farm Bureau office. Um, Clemson Extension, Clemson, SC State Extension. Yeah, Clemson Extension, SC State Extension have signed up as well. So really, as long as you have some kind of like smell of agribusiness, we are happy to, to put you down on the list and be part of our group, part of our partnership. And as we find veterans that, that their needs um, and their interests align with you, that's where we're going to put them. Um, that's the other thing is the, the veteran really has the say in all of it. And so when we find veterans that have a, uh, a desire to learn how to be a blueberry farmer, we're looking for blueberry farmers. If we have a desire to learn to be a commodity crop and grow soy or sorghum or something, that's who we're looking for. And so if you grow, uh, well, the fiber mill is a good one, right? I, I don't, maybe you'll have 5,000, you know, 5,000 interns if you sign up with us, or maybe you'll have none, but it's really not a, a not a gig on what you do as a farm or what you do as a business. It's more of an interest in the uh, in in the field that you're working in. And so just understand that it may take a little bit to find somebody that that fits you, but when they do fit you, we're you know we're we're really looking for somebody to really be what's in the best need of the veteran. And so that's kind of how we've set it up. Then that, that's why we've set this partnership up like it is. Um, yeah, so I covered a bunch of this. It's it's really training and guidance. Um, anybody that's super interested, I can mail you a couple of the different training plans that we've developed. Um, we were sort of doing this on the down low, not being all official like, just working individual training plans and sending them through the the legal review for the branch, getting them blessed off on and moving forward with it. And we had somebody that it didn't really work that way for them. And I didn't want to tell them no. And that's why we stood this up is it was actually a Navy, uh, a, an E6, a senior petty officer. What is she? I always forget the Navy ranks. I'm not real good at them. But I think she's a petty officer and and she couldn't get into our program unless we were approved through the um, through the DOD skill bridge. And so not wanting to say no, we just decided to ramp up our, our curriculum into something a little bit bigger. And really, I blame her for all of the extra hours at this point. But the good news is she's on our farm interning and uh, really enjoying what she's what she's going through. So it's kind of a kind of a win win for everybody because now they'll have a place. Veterans will all have a place to come to South Carolina to learn ag. Um, all of our partner farms will have uh, an opportunity to host an intern and and train somebody and have kind of the labor that comes along with training them. Um, if you think about how spread out the military is, so there's a person, is it Ross's farm, right? Yeah. 
uh, no. Ross's Stacy and, yeah, and Ross is, Abby. Yeah, so Stacy, who's on the on the call right now, and Abby, who's up by Columbia, is they're actually hosting somebody that's coming down from or coming over from Okinawa. It's a Marine that's getting out of the military and she wants to be an intern in agribusiness. And so coming from Okinawa, not having a housing allowance and all of that, we're trying to help her with her, her um, you know, her housing ability, her, her housing options. That's not a requirement. It's not even something that you have to really strive for, but it would be helpful, you know, if you have something, we're going to take our pop-up into Columbia and drop it off at Abby's farm so that she has a place to stay. And so it's just sort of an extra option. It would make it a little more, a little easier for us, us to place somebody. If you have that, that's a, that's just a bonus. And it's something that once we're starting to look for, yeah. look, looking to place somebody somewhere, we might ask about housing options, apartments near you. You know, is, is there a, is there a short term because you're not going to want to sign a year lease if you're only here for four months, short term accommodations or something like that. So just know that people are getting out of the military everywhere. They're not all getting out from South Carolina and they're coming back home somewhere. Um, some of them are going back to like, uh, one of the interns that's coming up, she's from Seneca, going back to Seneca, living with her mom for a couple of months. So there's also that. Just yeah. and just, and a lot of the interns, um, you know that that we're looking for placement for, already live in the area. So you know a lot of them um, down in the Charleston area. They're you know they're they're already in Charleston, Somerville, Ridgeville. Um, and so they're just kind of looking for a place where they can commute back and forth. Um, and so, so I think what we'll probably find moving forward is that typically if, if you're a farm around a military installation, um, that housing isn't really a concern. If you're kind of one of those remote away from military installations, um, if, you know, if, if you can help arrange housing in some way that 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 would kind of increase the possibility that we could place somebody typically the ones coming from from out of state but yeah i mean the the biggest thing to provide out of all of it is training guidance um, any kind of education it, it's you know it's a training opportunity for them so so what do you get from it let me go to the next slide so besides the satisfaction of helping us grow farmers, you get free labor. Um, the, I, I think the best way to learn how to build a fence is to build a fence. Now, supervised with you helping, but if you haven't run an auger, you need to run an auger. And if you haven't, um, you know, hauled 50 pound bags of concrete, you need to haul 50 pound bags of concrete. It's just it's sort of the way that we think that that, that that is the training plan that we take out of it. And so... What you'll get is is some intern on your farm that is willing to help you farm so they can learn to farm. They're able to work up to 40 hours a week, no more than 40 hours a week. But that said, um, generally, there are some appointments that come with getting out of the military. I know there's a couple of veterans in here and, and maybe some that aren't veterans. This is a very, very big transition. This is something that they have known for somewhere between four and I was at 22 years. Hold on, we're going to see if somebody's waiting to get in. Uh, oh, Steph. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a trick question. DOD gives a housing allowance to people that are stationed in the United States. And people that are stationed overseas get a different housing allowance. And as soon as they step foot off of the continent they're on, it goes away. And it uh, depends to um, kind of the pay grade. how senior they are and whether or not they're married. So if they were... If they were a junior soldier living in the barracks when they got out, um, then they still would not be getting any housing allowance. And that's that's really the ones that we're we're really concerned about. It's not the you know it's not the senior people with families that we're looking for housing for. It's typically that that junior soldier um, who is really most at risk during their transition, and and the ones that we want to ensure have a real soft landing and and help them out the most. Yeah, and as we as we reach out about, you know, uh, I don't remember exactly what Steph said she did. Denmark. Yeah, so, you know, if somebody wanted to come over to you, Steph, and we knew they didn't have a house in that area, when we reached out to you, we would talk about that. We would kind of work through that. And um, I, 
and Ross, to answer your question, I think it's sort of both, right? There, she said, do we try to help them with housing or do we let them pursue it? I think it's kind of both. If they say they've got it and they're on it, then let's, you know, let's let them do it. Let them ad hashtag adulting, let them be an adult and get through it. Um, if, if they say they're struggling or they don't know how to, you live there, you know the area best. So maybe a couple of points of contact, link them up with a realtor that helps, you know, with that kind of stuff. There, there, it, it's sort of a, um, it takes a village kind of philosophy. And I don't know that there's a right, like a right every time answer other than it'll be whatever the situation dictates, whether you help them find a house, they find a house. Um, you, you might have a neighbor 10 houses down that's renting a room over their garage or something. I mean, we'll kind of work through that person by person. And that's what Karen and I are here for. That's why we did all the paperwork to be the skill bridge. And we're going to partner with you guys so that when we reach out to uh, when we reach out to you about an intern and putting them on your farm, we'll have a pretty good idea of what we think they're going to need coming in because we'll know where they are, what their rank is, um, what their marital status is. That we will have already had a phone call with them before we reach out to you, so that so that we kind of understand what we're going through. Then we'll reach out to you, and if the timing is good, we'll put everybody on a Zoom call together. And we'll go through a whole bunch of expectation management of what they need um, and, and what their interests are and, you know, what your interests are and what your what your farm can provide. And so it, it's really a uh, it's really a uh, kind of a group effort to put people in here because it's kind of hard to get out of the military. It's definitely a difficult thing. And that's that's what we figured out going into it. And so we really wanted to put people set people up for success. And I would have been terrified after 22 years in the military, if I had retired out of Alaska and had to come back to South Carolina, it would have been one of the most dramatic and terrifying experiences of my life. And I got like three years in combat. So um, you just got to kind of think about what, what mindset you would be in um, as you were moving back this way, if that's what was going on. Uh, Steph said, so we must be working full time on the farm to be eligible. Yeah, staff, I, somebody needs to be there to train them up to 40 hours a week. Um, if your situation is a little bit different, we're pretty flexible with how we do things, but somebody has to be there to train them. You can't really say, go trim the blueberry bushes to somebody that's been doing um, administrative duties for the last four to eight years, and then you go off to work somewhere and come back. And I don't mean that flippantly, it's just kind of, would, would you trust your farm to somebody that has no farming experience? And that's, you know, that's kind of a scary thought, but that's that's really kind of where it is. And it kind of varies the same with the other one. It kind of varies from person to person. If there's somebody that was on a cattle farm their entire youth, joined uh, the military at 18, had been running cattle for 18 years, got out after four years, they were away from cattle for four years, and they're coming to your farm, you could probably move them uh, you could probably move that, let them go run some cattle on your farm separately without you. It's just sort of, <laughs> you have them left. Yeah, it's just, so, and, and there, there is that too. So our intern was here. Uh, we did one, not through this program that we've set up, but as we were building the program and test running it and beta testing it, I guess is what we should call it. We had an intern on our farm for four months and he and his wife were here about two and a half months or so. And we, we had to go away for a couple of days um, for a wedding. We were gone almost a week and they farm sat for the whole week and everything was good. I was prepared to come back to dead turkeys or dead chickens. And it's kind of, I was okay with that. It, it was either go to the wedding or not. And so um, just know that the situation will dictate everything. Everybody's experience with this is gonna be different. Every host farm is gonna be different with their experience because they farm differently. And they have different stuff on there and every veteran's experience is going to be different. And as long as you communicate with them uh, and with us up here, we'll sort of sort all that out. Okay, let's see. How do I get to the next slide? All right, what are you expected to teach them? So like I said earlier, we'll give you a training schedule that we use. Just adopt it to your organization, whether that is to take it from goats and alpacas to blueberries or from whatever we have to that. Take them out when you go meet your uh, your clients or your sales reps and all that stuff. Show them everything that farming is, the good, the bad, the ugly. What we'll do at our end is we're gonna augment it. So our farmer boot camp that we run 
is a two-day event right now, but we are going to work to change it to a, a multi-day event, probably up here somewhere near us so that we can bring everybody up for a few, a few days somewhere throughout their um, internship experience and just kind of run through some stuff with them that, that we have where we can bring some resources in and some professional uh, mentors and all of that stuff. I mean, you guys are all professional farmers, but like SCORE and the SBA and the SBDC, USDA, USDA and, and all of this. And the whole alphabet soup. Yeah, so um, we work with all of them and they're happy to come out several times a year to run this boot camp with us. And when we expand it, we'll be able to give them a little more face time with those organizations. So when they get out, they know who to speak to, where to go once they get to their county, who to talk to in the extension, um, how to get their farm number, their LLC, their poultry license. State card. Yeah, yep. poultry license and all that stuff. All the things. So that's what we're going to do on that end. And, Thanks for the shout out, Stacey. Um, um, yeah, but I, I think the really important thing is to, to try and be transparent and open with them. Um, you know, it, it doesn't do... It doesn't do any of them any good if they don't see the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and so, you know, I mean, our our new intern has been here not even a week, and we've right, had dead pig. piglets, and um, you know, the the things that happen on the farm. So, so don't try to you know to insulate them from any of that. Um, you know, it, if you're willing, show them your books. Show them. You know, show them how much your feed costs have gone up over the past two years. These are, you know, these are conversations that are just as important um, as anything else we do on the farm. Yeah. I, and I mean, talking somebody out of farming isn't failure. If, if they sit out on your farm for four months and learn how to do that, and they are capable to run, a, build a garden, run a hobby farm and all of that, um, and they decide to go get a, a full-time job somewhere else because farming's hard work and it's the the margins are pretty slim on it. Then then you you're as long as they're successful when they get out, then then you're successful. That's what we want. Um yep, and, and absolutely it was great that so many people mentioned agritourism in their introductions. Um agritourism is something that we are very passionate about because, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that we don't think that, uh, you know, we, we don't think that it's, it's sustainable to have a small to medium sized farm these days without some secondary sources of income. Um, and so, uh, um, we, you know, we, we really push the agritourism on, on all of our, farmer boot camp and, and everything like that so yeah and we'll be speaking at the agritourism conference in a yep. couple of weeks yep. so, so if anybody's yeah if anybody's part of that and you want to meet us face to face instead of zoom to zoom we'll be there so come say hi um yeah Latanya, we'll push out the farmer boot camp stuff um it's march 8th and 9th is the next one and you're happy you're welcome to join you said you're a veteran you're welcome to join us we're happy to have you just uh shoot us an email, let us know. And that's on our webpage too. You can just sign up for it. Okay, so I already mentioned all, of, I gotta slide this over. Um, so I've already mentioned what you can expect from us, a bunch of it. So what we'll do is we're gonna vet everybody. Um, I, I, I consider myself a fairly good judge of character and within a few minutes and I've got Ross is on the phone, right? Or on the Zoom with us right now. And then uh, Stacy's on the Zoom call with us, but Stacy didn't meet the other person the, the, the secondary farm did. I've already placed those two with those two farmers because I, once I figure out exactly what they're looking for, I will make a couple of phone calls. We'll talk about personalities and level of energy and all of those other things that kind of weigh into that, that, um, that, you know, that dynamic of having somebody that's on your farm up to 40 hours a week, every week for four to six months. And, and you want to make sure that it's kind of a good fit. So we're going to try to make sure that it's a great fit. Then we're going to do a Zoom call and basically introduce ourselves and then introduce you two together. And then I'm going to hit mute and let y'all chit chat for like an hour. And at the end, if y'all both give us a thumbs up, then that's what we're going to do. And if uh, if you both give us a thumbs up and then somebody calls me a little bit later, they're like, no, please don't. I'll find somebody else. And you don't even have to be mean on that thing. It's all good. Uh, Steph, please. If what if we like 
have to leave the farm for like 45 like i have to pick up my daughter from daycare which is like a yeah, half hour drive yeah no problem yeah, yeah, yeah not, no. okay yeah yeah absolutely when i say up to 40 hours really you should plan on somewhere between 20 and 30 hours uh, most people are going to have some sort of appointment some type of appointment um the last guy that was here that worked for us at a, as an internship he had to do all of his disability paperwork and um if you haven't been out of the gotten out of the military and filed for disability through the VA it is a lot of paperwork and so we asked him to do his appointments on like Tuesdays and Thursdays or Mondays and what, whatever days just so that you know on the days that we knew that he was going to be gone um so you'll be able to coordinate all of that stuff it's not a big deal at all I, I wouldn't expect to see anybody on your farm 40 hours a week. I would probably suspect that you'll see them somewhere around 30 um, with the exception of. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, some of the like place. today, um, you know, today we told our intern to take an extra day on the weekend because we had to go down to Aiken. So, um, you know, it, as long as, as there is a consistent presence on the consistent farm, consistent presence on the farm, you know, they don't they don't need to be. They are soldiers um, or sailors or airmen or Marines. Um, and, and so they don't, they don't need to be babysat, you know, 24 seven. Um, but, you know, the main goal is, is really consistency and in, in training and presence. Yep. And, and the staff, not just the staff, but everybody else. Um, you know, if, if you have every afternoon, you need to leave from three to five and they want to stay and work, you know, Trust me with some of these folks, if you say you can leave at three every day, they've been working long days somewhere else. They're just going to leave at three every day and they're probably good with that. As long as they get the experience they want, then then we're OK with that, too. I'm not saying that they need to work a nine to five, but if they want to work a little bit and you got to go and you won't be back and you can give them a project like, hey, why don't you help with this garden? We're going to try to build this garden here or something. You there is some stuff that they can do on the farm while you're not there. They don't have to yeah, be handheld. Yeah, and I, I think maybe maybe Stacy can chime in too. Cause I think that, you know, I think that that's something that um, she and Abby kind of worked out um, when, when she was an intern, she had a few projects that if, if Abby wasn't around, then, um, then Stacy would, you know, go back to her project that she was working on, on the farm. So, so yeah. things like that. Yeah. Hey, Stacy, give me like one more slide because I don't want to keep everybody, but I'll let, I'll see, I'll see if you want to just give a little, a little, monologue about it um so we'll uh we'll be in regular communication with you and your and your intern um what i think we're gonna do we're still building the program we're still growing it we'll probably do a zoom meeting like this either once a week or once every two weeks for the interns themselves with uh just them so it can be after hours and they'll zoom in and they'll say yeah everything went great this week or i you know i i have all these appointments and i can't get to them because uh, who was it? Steph. Steph won't let me leave the farm but she goes and gets her kids or something, you know, so that we can sort it out. And then we'll probably do an optional um, every two weeks with the farmers just so that you can dial in and give us any feedback. Because what can happen is if you get a bad limit and you have to think the military is really a big sampling of the of the United States. And so I know that everybody thinks military are like the most amazing, hardworking people ever. And that's true for a lot of them. But it's a sampling of the United States. And sometimes you're going to get people that just want to like goof off and not do anything. And if you tell me that they're not working and they're not showing up and you have no idea where they are, then we'll call their chain of command and send them back. So you owe us some of that communication too. I don't want you to have a bad experience. Uh, it's not fair for you as a, as a host, somebody willing to help a, a veteran to have somebody that's a veteran on the farm that's unwilling to um, to participate in the internship and they were just trying to get out of work and they thought farming was a way to get out of work. Um, and as a former uh, like E9 in the army, I was I was pretty senior for non-commissioned officers and I would be absolutely livid and I would have no problems calling their chain of command and sending them back to Okinawa and telling them good luck getting out of the military now. So just that's that's what you can expect for us. And then we'll coordinate any additional training opportunities and uh, we'll do a final assessment. We'll probably be um, around to visit your farms a couple of times while you have an intern. We won't like no surprise, no knock warrant type visit. I'll coordinate it with you to make sure that, you know, I can I can come out and see you guys. 
Um, we live way up in the upstate by Clemson, so it, it's not like I'm just going to show up anyway. We're about as far away from almost anybody else as we can be. Um, so that's what you can expect from us. And then, so what's next? Uh, if, if you're ready to go, we're going to put you on the list. Send us an email. Put it in the chat room. When we end this Zoom, we're going to go through the chat and make sure we got everybody. Um, and then we'll start looking for an intern. Um, when you when you set yourself up in this email, we'll probably email you a couple of times just to get a good feel for your farm. Maybe even a, a quick phone call, but you know, just to know what you've got going on on your farm. Um, if you, if, I hope so, Ross. I'm coming to you. Ross just posted that she's in, and she's got an intern showing up in like 60 days. So that's that's good. I'm glad that she's in. Not even 60 days, 45 days now, I think. Um, and we'll add you to the list, and then we'll we'll be aggressively searching for for good fits for people. Um, we'll send you the training template, and then what what you could probably do is uh, adjust it for what you can provide and send it back to us, even without an intern. And then once we get you an intern, you can uh, you and the intern can adjust it for if you do. Uh, I know there's a bunch of farms that were like we do some of everything like we do, and that's okay. If they say, I don't want to do anything in animal husbandry, I just want to do horticulture. Well, you've got all the horticulture and all the animal husbandry stuff on your training plan. Take out the animal stuff. If they don't want to touch animals, that's cool. Just keep them in the garden or vice versa. Um, so we did about, oh, I can't count how many pages of paperwork for the Department of Defense. I mean, it's a bureaucratic nightmare to get anything done through the government. And so we did all of that and we signed a whole bunch of paperwork to say everything that we just told you in about an hour. We will try to send a one page memorandum of agreement to your farm and it'll be between your farm and Project Victory Gardens. And all it'll say is we will adhere to the rules. We won't work them more than 40 hours. We won't pay them. We won't insure them, blah, blah, blah. Um, and once you sign that, then, then we'll be able to send you an intern. But it'll just be between us and you, not between the Department of Defense, which means that we're on the line for it. So you have to uh, adhere to those rules so that we don't get gigged for it, pulled out of the internship pipeline, and then nobody else. It would be kind of sad for one farm to ruin it for every other farm in South Carolina. So we're hoping that you do what's right, and we'll do what's right, and we'll make sure that everybody's good. Um, is that it for that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to, Stacey, are you still on there? I scrolled somewhere else. I can't see your. Yes, I'm here. Hey, do you want to? Just do a quick mock. There you are. Sorry, I passed you. You want to do a quick how it went? Uh, sure. Yep. So um, I was interning uh, at, with at Abby Kowalki's farm, uh, Crazy Chick Heritage Farm. She's an Army. Um, sorry. She's a Air National Guard uh, veteran. And her husband's a Navy veteran. Um, so uh, Matt and Kara helped me get linked up because before all these things um, existed, I, I linked up through the um, the South Carolina uh, Department of Agriculture folks, and thank God I found them because within a few days they had me hooked up with Abby. Um, so I was working with her for let's see, it was like four plus months, um, and she uh, raises pigs, cows, chickens, um, goats. She has some llamas, horses, a mule, a few other things, but. Um, yeah, so, you know, really, I just kind of rolled in um, and, and just did whatever they were doing. Um, and uh, the nice thing about working with, with them, I think, was that, um, so I was kind of a little bit more focused on growing, and they didn't do as much of that, but there was still a lot of things that were definitely applicable, um, even to the growing side of things. And um, the thing I, I, I really value about it is just um, the, getting connected with you know, other farmers, all the other connections. So, you know, Abby hooked me up with another farm in the area and I would go out and spend time with them occasionally. Um, and so I got to meet all these other farmers through her and, you know, helped with the other farms. So it was kind of like a, uh, you know, a family atmosphere, if you will, um, that we, um, and, and so now to this day, I'm still, you know, I'm still in contact with all those farms. And, and you know, whenever any one of us wants to help each other out, we give, you know, we call each other. Um, great mentors. And so, you know, just consider as you are getting ready to uh, intern with these folks that there's a fair chance you've, uh, you know, you've, you've earned them for life, that they're probably going to hit you up with questions. Um, and, you know, and they will probably pass it on to the next generation. Um, 
you know, once once they've, they're established in their firms and that they've got new folks. Um, but I'm happy to take anyone's questions if you have any specific questions. Yeah, let's unshare somehow. Let's see everybody again. Okay. There so, we go. Yeah, so <clears throat> I guess now is probably the time to open up the questions. Um, so you have Steph, or I'm sorry, Stacy, who has been an intern before, if you have any questions about what you can expect from an intern, like as far as their, their timeline to get out. And then, uh, or if you have any questions for us, cause we've hosted, we're on our third intern now hosting. And I know that this is supposed to end in four minutes. So this, that's kind of the end of the official portion. If you have, if you want to shoot us an email and tell us you're all in or you're, it's not for you, e either way, you, you don't hurt my feelings. If it's not for you, but it is for your neighbor, then maybe link us up with your neighbor. I, I think we're going to have a lot of interns come here because it's, it seems to be pretty popular. Um, then we're happy to add other people to the partnership. And so I, I know some people are cooking dinner, so drop off if that's what you want to do. And if not, then I'll hang out at least until 730 when Georgia starts playing football. Even though I'm a Clemson fan, I probably should watch this. Um, yeah, whoever just posted that. It's Ross. Yeah, Ross, no, there, it's, there's I... there's a ton of farmers in this area. Yeah. Um yeah, so uh and Stacy, are you good to stay on for a few extra minutes or you you've got to bounce too? Yeah, definitely. I'm available. Okay. So hey, thank you everybody for joining us and your interest in our organization, our program. Um, we hope we can partner with you. Uh if we can't, we hope we can still partner with you in some other way. And if you if you have anything else, whether we're you know helping you get interns on your farm or not, just shoot us an email. All we want to do is grow farmers. That's our that's our main mission. So if there's some other way to do it that you find is better, shoot us a note. I know that we're not perfect and we're gonna grow this as we get through it. So that is the end of it. Thank you so much. And any questions we are yeah, and if you haven't put your contact information in the chat or we haven't already corresponded by um by email, please do that before you log off and, and we really appreciate it. Um, we've had a couple of questions in the chat, depending on, on your type of organization. And I think the answer is probably for your organization, yes, Amy, um, just because you know the, the kind of setup, I think, uh, would work really well for some of our joint-based Charleston folks, um, you know, with uh with the way you you guys have it. And um, I will be reaching out uh to to you and Ben tomorrow um, because we we do have one that wants to start like February so um, that from from Ridgeville so um, so great so uh, we will copy everything down in the chat um, and uh, those okay. of you and reach out to those of you who have said yes I'm I'm in. Um, but if there are any other questions that we didn't address, yeah, we'll hit mute and just unmute yourself and ask your questions and then we'll. We'll go from there, either us or Stacy as a former uh, a former intern. No questions. If anybody's asked, I have a question, and I don't I don't know if I'm uh, live or not. But to Stacy, was it a a great experience and you do it again or I'm so excited about this program I just I'm not you know I'm just thrilled about it and don't know I'm just a little unsure about it. it was absolutely great and I definitely would do it again I mean it's it was it was just invaluable and a lot of those things are probably not things that, uh, the, you know the best things I learned were not the things that necessarily were on that you know like our shall we say curriculum, that list of, of things to learn, you know, it was the things that pop up all the farming things, you know, we were getting ready for a farmer's market and all of a sudden one of the goats is given birth, you know, uh, my second day there, I had a tree almost laying on my head because we had a huge storm and then we were fixing fences, you know, and, and, and just to kind of get a good feel for, you know, I, I mean, when I went through all that and I thought, yes, I, I still love this and I still want to do it. But I was glad to try that out because I think maybe some people will go, wow, this is not what I expected. And, you know, it, it's a good risk free way to, to try out farming. But I'm really happy to do it. I, I, I was happy to have done it and I would absolutely like to support more uh, 
you know, more, more budding farmers. It's so great to hear that because it is like you say, all of a sudden, you know, the hurricane comes through and your high tunnel's got problems and it, yeah, it's always a different day, but thank you. Thank you for sharing. Sure thing. I have a question. So I have a small farm here in Latson, South Carolina, mm -hmm. and we're probably about five minutes. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're about maybe 10, 15 from the Air Force Base. We're actually on College Park Road, uh, off College Park Road in Dorchester Road. So That's where I went to high school. Where did you go to high school? Stafford. Ah, you are so right with my, look, you're in my wheel well. <laughs> So close. I'm trying to get with Stratford to do a um, a collab with them so I can bring some students in and, and teach them about the farming and how to, uh, you know, because we don't have any FSA here mm -hmm. on this side of town, which, you know, South Carolina is a billion dollar industry and we do that in farming. So mm -hmm. we need, um, when I was in a lot of the classes, all our farmers are really aging out and we need younger youth to yeah, pop the, in and do that. Yeah. So the average age of farmers yeah. in the United States is 58 and a third yes. of them are over the age of retirement. And we're doing this to try to lower the, we're doing this for veteran wellness and veteran health and veteran employment right. for sure. But yeah. we're really doing it to try to lower the age of farmers because right. I like to eat and I don't want to not be able to eat in 20 years. Like, it's crazy. But, you know, I'm, I'm 75 years. My family's been farming for 75 yeah. years. And my uncle, I come in and I tell him, I said, hey, I'm going to come into farming. And he just almost cries because he's like 76 years old. He said, thank God. My children wouldn't go into farming. And here you come, my niece, say, okay, I'm going to go in and do it. Because well, my husband's like, let's go do some farming. And, yeah. Here I am, Mike. Yeah, we're, ha yeah, we're happy like to have you part acres. of the team. And five acres yeah. or 55 acres or 5,000 acres. Oh, yeah. A farm is a farm. And frankly, when you're looking at veterans, unless they came from a row cropper that's got 5,000 acres, they're not moving on to five. The VA house, the housing, what is it? The VA loan for a house doesn't let you get more than 10 or 15, maybe 20 acres on the high end. So all yeah. the smaller farms are very valuable because they show these people, these veterans, these folks that are about to leave the military, how to be successful on a very small plot of land. Right. So yeah, we're happy to have you. And then okay. Amy, uh, Amy, you're gonna have to give us a little bit of time to like assemble all the farms that are part of this and uh, where they are and their web pages and their Facebook pages and stuff. What I would like to do is we have our Palmetto Vets and Agribusiness website that's part of our Project Victory Gardens website. And it says interested in the internship and you can click on it. And then I would like to link everybody that's a partner with us on our webpage so that you can get traffic through our webpage too. So yes, we will share it, but I don't think it's gonna be uh, tomorrow. Oh, that's fine. Are you need help get back there or are you good? <laughs> Yeah, this need, uh, I this, muted my conference call. Do you need to help back to the sofa or are you good? There you go. Um, this this program definitely uh definitely is growing a lot faster than than we had anticipated. So um and you know, right now it's it's just Matt and I. So if if there is a delay in communication, um call us. Yeah, call us <laughs> or email or our phone numbers on the bottom of, of every email. So um if you don't hear from us, just just call us. If we don't answer, just keep calling. Yeah, I mean, like we have a nonprofit, we have a 501c3, but um, with the rate of what we're doing, it's not a big deal because we're both retired and drawn disability and drawn disability checks. So we have like four paychecks a month coming in, plus my GI Bill money. So we're do we're doing fine, but we are now working pro bono trying to place these veterans on these farms, which is why. We did this big group conferences because I sat through so many meetings in the army, quarterly training briefs and quarterly this and quarterly that. And I was like, these are so stupid. And then I filled it like 19 farm phone calls in a week. I was like, we need to do one of these about every month or quarter. Um, somehow the army had it right. And that made me crazy to say that out loud. So we'll continue to do these every couple of every month or two. But um, if you don't get feedback from us, it's not because we're ignoring you. It's because we missed it. And we're just trying to get everybody where they need to be. So please feel free to call. Great, uh, thank you guys. Yeah, no yeah, problem. Absolutely.
What other questions about internships, hosting an intern, being an intern? Hey, hey, hey it's Tim Rowe. Kara, I just sent you an email. I hope you got it. Okay, and, thanks, uh, Tim. Please let I me know. I, Tim is one of those uh, that I haven't called back yet. <laughs> and I need to- hey, That's all right. I just <laughs> wanted to get permission from you. We, we have a small group of organic farmers that I, I, we put together as a group. There's about 50 of us, and I just wanted okay. to get your to get your permission to share the email about this meeting. Oh, and yeah. I just made the executive I made the executive decision to edit anyway. So yeah, I sent so, it out. To one yeah, so we'll we'll send the video link to you so you can show it to all of them. And then there's as long as you're very Perfect. local, and we come up with some other collaborative. So Stacy who's at the historic Camden is, is sort of been um, taken a, a, a back step to farming to get, to get this director job that you're doing there so that you can step back to farming here shortly. And so we were going to share an intern with, um, with Abby and Stacy 50, 50, but it looks like it's probably going to be more like 90, 10 or 80, 20, but the, the intern that we're putting on Abby's farm is going to work over with Stacy. So Tim, you know, if you're the, lead guy and you send me a training plan and you're like he's going to be on my farm or she's gonna be on my farm you know these days but on Wednesdays I'm sending her to this other farm because they do something really cool on Wednesdays and on Thursdays I want him to go over here um then that's cool and I was going to intern with the Clemson extension and I can send you my training plan it looks like I was going to take a field trip every week to go from farm to farm to farm uh, I, I didn't get to do it because of COVID which is another reason I built this because I was just jealous I didn't get to do one of these um, so we're happy to, you know, have your whole conglomerate. If you can come up with some organic farm in this county, tri county, whatever area, and you have a list of the farms that's part of it, and there'll be a, a couple of these farms or whatever, we can even like place somebody there with whoever wants to sign the memo, knowing that they'll have duty at some of the other farms. And that's super easy to do. We're way flexible on this thing. I, I, we, we have so much left and right limits here that we can really do whatever we want. Yeah, absolutely. And and I know that um, several of you mentioned that uh, you are veteran farmers as well. So um, if you are not tracking the farmer veteran, the South Carolina Farmer Veteran Coalition Symposium will be February 11th um, at the Phillips Market Center at the, the State Farmers Market in Columbia. Um, so if you haven't signed up for that, that's going to be awesome. We're bringing a lot of resources and stuff together for that. Um, and there's a lot of oh, I'm going the wrong way. Sorry. Yeah, um, I just oh, it's all right. Well, this is Tim. I'm gonna I'm gonna run. But if you guys, if you want to, just send me that plan. And um, like I said, I'm I'm ready. And if you want me to put together a plan for my farm to start, I could do that. Um, you know, you just, just let me know in an email what you want me to do for the next step. Yes, sir. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, thanks for joining in. And yeah, whatever kind of conglomerate, we, we might just need to have a phone call with you because you have kind of a special situation. Sure. Um, and give us a, no where, problem. where were you at again? Where was he at? Walter Walter Burrow. Burrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Give us a, a, a little lead and, and, and we'll get on a phone with you uh, here in the next week or two. Yep. Whenever uh, I'm retired as well. So whenever you want, you just call me. All right. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Tim. Thanks guys. And thanks for doing this. This is great. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Uh, I don't know if we are missing any questions because I was trying to scan through the questions and I'm real bad at this. Um, is there anybody else that has a question out there or something they want to ask? Oh, it's a new message. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Julia, we would love to talk to you guys about what you're doing and uh, hopefully you, you join us for the symposium as well. Well, well, I mean, I'll sit here and hang on um, as people, I won't, I won't actually end the meeting. So as people drop out, if somebody wants something they want to